So this install is for a 2016 Mustang GT. Um, it is the Stage 2 Whipple uh, 2.9 liter supercharger kit. Uh, I did upgrade to the dual uh, dual fan heat exchanger. Um, I live in Southern California and it gets really hot and there is traffic. So just don't want things to overheat. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the Stage 2 comes with a uh, 132 millimeter uh, throttle body. Um, I think maybe bigger injectors. Not quite sure actually. I don't. I don't really know what uh, what the Stage 2 kit comes with more than just that uh, bigger throttle body. I'm pretty sure it has bigger injectors. Um, but I, the the head unit, the blower itself, um, is is the same as the Stage 1 kit. I do know that. Um, so here's a shot of the Mustang it's going into. Um, it is stock except a Flowmaster Outlaw uh, catback exhaust that I installed. Here is my Instagram handle if you want to follow. Uh, we're sitting on Vossen X-Work wheels. Uh, 315s in the rear, 305s in the front. And that's pretty much it. So I guess we'll just dive in. Um, I'm going to hopefully do you know a, a very detailed step-by-step -step, uh, video instruction, and uh, I, you know I've never done a, a supercharger install like this before, and honestly, it's probably the biggest uh, undertaking that, uh, at least mechanically, that I that I've ever tried to you know accomplish. Um, the main reason why I'm doing this is because I, you know I got a couple quotes from a few different um, uh, shops you know around the Los Angeles area and. It's really expensive. You are, you know, you already spend eight to ten thousand dollars, you know, on on the supercharger kit. Uh, granted, it you know comes with everything, but it's it's expensive. So I want to save myself, you know, if I can, three thousand dollars, and you know, try and be as self sufficient as possible. Um, when doing research on you know maybe any kind of how to videos on YouTube, uh, I didn't I didn't find anything out there. I found I found stuff for you know older older Mustangs. Um, there is another uh, uh, guy out there that actually kind of did a, a how-to install, but it was it was just very very quick, um, and it didn't actually include any real mechanical instructions. Um, so I'm hoping to target the people that are like me who are cheap. <laughs> they, you know, they want to save some money, try attempting themselves. Um, and hopefully, you know, this, this video documentary will help, you know, help somebody, even if it's just one person. Cool. Um, so anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to dive into it and I'll give, you know, hopeful, hopefully a uh, step-by-step instructions and we'll see how it goes. All right. First step, I guess we got to get in the back here. So it looks like there's a tab that you push, push that one in, and then same over here, push that one in, it releases the seat, the seat comes up. So it looks like uh, you just push down on the tab right here, the screwdriver or something, and then pop that off. Now we're going to run the fuel out by starting the car, turning it over. So you want to, after after you already ran the fuel out, you want to try and start it one more time, let it run for like, I don't know, five seconds, and then push the button again to make sure that all of the fuel um, is uh, ran out of the lines. So you're, uh, I, I guess the, the fuel system is under pressure, um, so you just want to relieve the rest of the fuel that's in the rails and the, I'm guessing, injectors and lines um, before you start taking shit apart. So it looks like you got to reconnect it after you drain all the fuel out of the system. So just pop it back in, I guess. But don't start it again because you'll put more fuel into the system. So 
so now you gotta get your uh, tuner module. You got a really cool Whipple branded flash drive. You're gonna plug that into your computer, download the software, you're gonna take your, uh, I don't know, this is like a, I think that's like an OBD, some sort of OBD serial port or something. Probably hooking this up to your uh, computer, downloading the current uh, computer or uh, tune. And then you're gonna send that to Whipple via email and they will send you a uh, calibrated, updated tune back. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So after following the instructions for uploading and downloading your tune, um, you go ahead and pop the intake uh, manifold air cover off. Uh, I just have it setting up here. Um, then I'm gonna use some compressed air and blow out the engine bay. Pop off plastic cover from the battery and disconnect the negative power terminal. Next step is to drain the coolant. You're gonna to want to unscrew the cap for the reservoir up here. And then take out this uh, plastic shroud so that we can get to the petcock right here and drain the radiator. I found it easiest to use uh, a drill with a seven millimeter um, socket. Um, there's probably 15 screws in this plastic shroud um, and doing by hand was taking far too long. Um, there's also some plastic fasteners. Um, so just make sure to hold on to those. You can pop those out with a flathead screwdriver. Get in these wheel wells and take out all of these push pins. There's push pins all around here. And uh, you can do that with a flathead screwdriver. Uh, we're gonna pop them out. I believe there's about 14 of them and basically we're just going to remove this inner plastic wheel well uh, shield. So once you get all the, f uh, I think it's about 14 push pins out, um, you're going to just basically push in this way and work this inner plastic wheel well piece out. Um, then you're going to basically just pull it out. Uh, I'm going to do this with two hands so I don't scratch up the, the fender, but you get the idea. So this piece comes out, and then after that, we're going to take off this radiator plastic shroud. Uh, I think there's about eight push pins also. Um, you'll notice that these ones are uh, a little bit smaller than the than the ones that hold in the, um, the plastic shrouds underneath the vehicle and in the wheel well. So make note, um, these ones are definitely smaller. To remove the front bumper, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight uh, screws. And then you have one that is down here. It's kind of hard to see, but underneath the, right where the, the bumper meets the quarter panel, up inside here, there is a, I believe it's a six, six millimeter bolt. Um, one on each side, then you just lift up and the whole bumper comes off. Over here, you pull out um, and then it'll disconnect from this piece right here. On both sides, make sure you unplug the fog lights and these are just a uh, little push, push pins on all three of these. Remove the factory inlet tube, that's as simple as pushing on this pin and pulling out. Next we're going to remove the sound resonator tube. So that's this guy right here. It has this little pinch clamp. Just comes off to the side and pull it out. That came off of right here. Next we're going to do the valve cover inlet.
going to use this vacuum line that comes from the intake manifold. It is this guy right here. And we're disconnecting it from the brake booster line. And then after that, we are unplugging this guy from the intake. Next, we disconnect the factory MAF connector by pulling back on the safety lock. Loosen this nut for the uh, hose clamp. You're going to loosen both hose clamps. One was right here, right at the throttle body. The other one's here, right at the air box. Take your air box cover off, disconnect the rest of these hoses, loosen this guy. Now your throttle body's exposed and this guy will come off. Uh, I'm guessing just with the, this hose right here. Then we're going to uh, take the air box, uh, the lower portion out, and uh, supposedly the top part is no longer used. And we take our air filter out, and there should be a bolt down in here somewhere to remove the uh, factory air box. So there's just one bolt that holds in the air box. It's right there, and it connects right there. And basically, this thing kind of just wiggles its way out. Okay, so now we have the complete air box assembly out. We have the intake uh, tubing out. Now the uh, intake manifold, uh, I'm sorry, the throttle body is now exposed. Um, there is a solenoid here uh, that we have to unplug. And then we need to disconnect this piece right here. So this EVAP tubing is what disconnected from the solenoid right here. So you follow this and it comes out of these little uh, engine mounts. Um, you kind of just pull them apart a little bit and then this will slide right out of it. You keep following this back and it actually ends up coming below the brake. Uh, uh, booster or pump um, So it's kind of hard to get to it's gonna be Right there that little poke that's sticking out I don't know if you can see it Yeah That guy right there that post that's where this plugs into but you got to get two hands in there and it has these little tabs See how it pops out like that? You have to push these little tabs up and then kind of with two hands pull pull it out. Then the whole thing comes out. Okay, this part was a pain in the ass. You gotta get this hose with these two clamps off of that guy right there down here it's got two pressure clamps I used this first I started with just some regular pliers but wasn't going I tried to find the right tool nobody seems to carry it so it's got some long 90 degree angle needle nose and just kind of had to muscle it off, but it took about 15 minutes, and I don't think it should have taken that long. But you just have to obviously pinch these guys together. Just like that. Work it off. Remove the vent hose from thermostat housing right there to the overflow tank for your coolant. Again, pinch clamps. On the throttle body, you have your electrical connection. It's secured with a piece of electrical tape. Just give a little slice, careful, remove that piece of electrical tape so that this wire comes free. Pull that red tab out. 
remove the heater hose. You got your locking tab right here. I believe you just push that in and pull out. So this one was a little tricky. You have to get behind it and kind of squeeze both sides. It's got two tabs that want to hook onto it. So you're going to squeeze both sides and pull off. We just removed heater hose from this side of the block. Now we're gonna do the one on the driver's side of the block, which is right here. Same principle, push in these two and then that pops off. So step 35 says remove the brake booster vacuum line from check valve by removing pinch clamp. Um, there's no picture, um, but just to let you guys know, that's your brake booster right here towards the back on the driver's side. So basically, it's this hose that comes over right here. Here's your check valve, and you're gonna wanna remove these two pinch clamps. That's for step 35. Next, we're gonna remove the fuel line uh, on the driver's side, and that's basically just You got these little tabs right here that you push in, pinch, and then pop it up and slide the rubber hose off of the steel hose. Uh, you're gonna, definitely gonna want a paper towel. Uh, there's a lot of fuel that actually came out of here. Um, even though we disconnected the fuel pump um, and ran the, ran the car you know, for 10 seconds with the fuel pump disconnected to get the pressure out of the lines, there's still gonna be fuel in here. So catch it with the paper towel. Set this off to the side for now. And you're gonna to wanna to get a 10 millimeter, either a deep socket, um, yeah, deep, a deep well socket, or uh, I'm just gonna use this ratchet um, wrench here. Uh, we're gonna loosen all four of these bolts. One, two, three, four, and then we're gonna pop this off. Once these four bolts are off, take the plastic pieces off and you can remove these foam pieces also. Remove the cooler to heater tube overflow hose. Um, again, pinching this guy, pulling the hose away. Remove the coolant to heater tube overflow hole uh, hose. Uh, it's this guy right here. We have this one pinch clamp. Disconnect, get a towel because there's still coolant left in this line. I just let it drain into this towel. All right, this one was a bitch. You got this push clamp right here. Goes right there. Got this little T. There's these metal locking pins. One that's right this end of the T, the other one's on this end. First you gotta pop those off. And then, you gotta work this oh, wrong way. Uh, let's see, it's not like this. So you gotta work this out of here, and this will hang. A ton of coolant comes out of that, so have a fresh towel ready. Then it's kind of a puzzle to get this part off of there and this part off of there. You just gotta muscle it and wiggle it around and hope you don't break something. Good luck. Now that we've got all of these three disconnected, I'm going to disconnect this guy right here. Just got that hose off. It's dripping. I'm gonna keep this towel here. And then we're gonna remove these two bolts, eight millimeter socket. Thermostat, housing body has been removed. Again, lots of leaking. Get a towel ready. Now we're gonna move on to 
loosening out the four bolts for the fuel rails. Those are right here. One, two, three, and four. I think we're just gonna loosen them because I don't think the fuel rails actually have to come off, but uh, just loosen it. So while we're in here, loosen the four fuel rail bolts and then also that's a 10 millimeter and with an eight millimeter we're going to loosen the eight uh air intake manifold bolts as well four on this side four on that side so what we're going to want to do is it says that there's eight manifold intake manifold uh screws but i only see six i see one two three and four five six plus our fuel rail bolts one two three four what i did was i just finger uh, loosen them and then just let let them sit in their holes but make sure that it's completely de-threaded I don't think these intake manifold uh, screws actually come out um, they get loose and then you can pull them up and down but they kind of just stay there so it looks like now I'm going to be able to lift the intake manifold out of the car uh, there's two blue uh, solenoid connectors back here that you have to get your fingers back in there and push the tab and pull those out one here and then one right there I think it's gonna come out now though but I'll update the next video uh, if it's not as easy as just pulling this out I'll also disconnect your uh, fuel injector uh, power up back here but I seriously have rat turns nothing fell down in there oh that would suck look at that mice poop that sucked so you're probably gonna want two people taking out the intake manifold um, doing it by myself was fairly difficult um, you have all these connections in the back that you have to get to. Um, they have these little red pull downs. So you pull that out, push down, slides out. So there's one, two, three, four, another one right here. Then you have these tabs that you kind of just have to rip them out. That's hard to do that because there's no leverage. Um, cause you can't really get your hand back in here. So you got to hold intake manifold up with one hand yanking on these with the other but it eventually comes out um, you're gonna want to clean the surface of this of the ports make sure no dirt debris gets down inside um, I believe it says to use some, uh, an acetone and then once that's dry and uh, clean then just tape it off 
Um, you absolutely do not want to get any kind of debris down into your uh, cylinders. You could ruin your engine, so just be careful of that. Now I'm going to remove these heater tubes. You got a driver's side and a passenger side. So these black heater tubes from the actual block, uh, eight millimeter, one bolt. Loosen the three bolts securing the water pump pulley while the belt is still on uh, using a 10 millimeter socket. It's these three guys right here. Next we're gonna remove the engine belt. This is a 15 millimeter socket. This is the spring-loaded tensioner right here. Um, basically going to rotate that, basically pulling it up so you get enough slack in the belt and then you can just pull the belt off. Now we're going to remove the spring tensioner itself. So here's the actual spring tensioner and this is a 13 millimeter bolt right here. Uh, we're going to loosen that bolt and remove it and this whole assembly should just come off. Now that the tensioner is gone, I'm going to remove these three bolts and take off the water pump pulley. So now I'm going to move the wire loom on the passenger side. Um, there's a plastic fitting down here. I'm not quite sure how to take that off. I, I believe I'm just going to pull it off or yeah, I think we just got to work it off. Um, but then we have a ground wire uh, right here that's connected with a stud right behind this. Basically, we're just going to remove the wire loom. Um, there we go. And we're going to remove that, uh, that ground wire and then actually take out the uh, bolt that goes into this uh, housing. Okay, so this is actually fairly easy to get off. It's just a plastic piece with a, some grooving in it. Uh, I just pried it off with a screwdriver. Um, it's probably an easier way to, I think you gotta maybe pinch it somehow, but, oh yeah, yeah. It seems like you pinch it, but, well, know. Plastic parts, easy to replace. Uh, we're gonna remove the, the ground uh, wire here and then the actual full uh, bolt with a 13 millimeter deep well socket. Now on the passenger side, we're gonna follow this wiring harness around to where it meets, let's see. Okay, here we go, right here. We're basically going to uh, disconnect this from the actual um, engine block. I am now going to loosen each knock sensor. Uh, it's a 10 millimeter and we're going to rotate it outwards. Uh, so they're currently pretty uh, parallel to, uh, to the block here, uh, but we're actually going to rotate it out and then rotate this out until it's uh, uh, 0.100 of an inch from touching the block on each side. Seems like it's going to be a little bit easier to adjust the uh, or, or torque these down to 18 foot-pounds after we split the wire harness. So basically what we have to do is we have to split this wire harness, be very careful not to actually nick the wires. Um, I think we're going to split it back to about here. Uh, I'll show you the finished product once I finally figure it out. I'm kind of flying blind right now. Um, but basically, we need this split right here to be resting back here. Uh, so that the, the new uh, intake manifold can sit in here uh, without sitting on these wires. So what I'm going to do is remove all this tape on this. I don't think we have to remove any tape on this side. Um, remove tape here, uh, split this very carefully, um, thread it back to about right here, and then they give, uh, they supply, I believe this is the right uh, part. Um, it's called a split loom. 
Uh, I'm, I'm hoping this is the right part. If it's not, I will uh, give a new update. Uh, but I believe this will bridge the gap from the new exposed wires from this uh, to about right here. Quick update. Yes, it is just a, a bunch of electrical tape at this uh, junction. Just cut it away very carefully. Um, there's already a split in the in the hosing, I believe. Um, so you just keep cutting away this tape and keep splitting this apart till you get, I'm guessing, somewhere about back here. So maybe six, six to eight inches from the junction, this junction up here. Okay, I'm gonna position these uh, just till it's about a, a millimeter or two away from touching the block. Um, and then we're gonna torque uh, both of these bolts down to 18 foot pounds. Now that these are torqued down to 18 foot pounds, I'm gonna remove these little elbow plastic pieces that were to hold the angle of this at a 90 degree. I'm gonna remove both of them on each side because it looks like the cables just need to flow back towards this way. So we just split the loom, the wire loom, um, running it down the side over here because if it rests on this center part of the block, uh, the new manifold will hit it. So we have to run it around here. We uh, turn these out to uh, within, I think, one hundredth of an inch from touching the block on both sides. Torque these bolts down to 18 foot-pounds. Uh, installed the new wire loom on this piece. I actually split it a little too far down, so it's kind of snaking. Um, I should have split it maybe about right here, so there was less slack right here, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, next step is going to be installing the new spark plugs provided. Gap the plugs to 0 0.028. Then pull up on these little red tabs over the coil packs. Uh, so you just pull up on that, push down on that tab, and then pull. Once you get all eight of those done, you're gonna undo these bolts. And then with uh, about 10 inches, eight, eight to 10 inches of a uh, um, extension, uh, and then get your, uh, what is this, a three quarter, no, five eighths um, spark plug removal socket. Um, and then just take the sockets out and replace them with your NGK Radium LTR71X 11s. Just got done replacing the spark plugs on the driver's side. Uh, what that entails is um, basically popping off the plastic uh, head cover, undoing these bolts. Um, I believe I already explained this in the previous video, but uh, you pull up on these red tabs, push down, pull out the plug, coil packs come sliding out. Then you're gonna need about, a, I think about eight inches, eight to 10 inches of um, uh, socket extension. God, I can't think. Um, and actually, I had to duct tape mine uh, each piece together. Um, it kept getting stuck down in there. So now the coil is out. Old plug is out. Here's the new plug. Uh, it's gapped to 0.028. Got a feeler gauge. So now it's gapped correctly. And I'm gonna finish uh, swapping out these plugs on the passenger side. Just finished uh, removing the sound induction tube. Basically it's responsible for pumping engine noise into the cabin. Um, I should have taken it off a, a while ago, but I guess I kind of forgot that step, but Basically it has just one bolt 
uh, that goes right through there. Um, and it's got a nut. I think it's a, a nine or a 10. And it's basically right back in here. And it was extremely annoying to have to get your hand in here. I had to stick my hand down this way to get your fingers back in here. And I had a ratcheting uh, wrench and basically just sat there and micro moved it for 10 minutes. So yeah, that's how you get that out. And I do not believe this is getting reused. Now we're gonna take the sound grommet delete, uh, the sound tube delete grommet and install it into the hole that's uh, in the firewall. Uh, right back in here, just pops in. That's gonna be in your parts. Sound tube delete grommet, this bottom one right here. Small little bag. So locate your aftermarket thermostat. It's a high flow. Um, gonna remove the thermostat housing here. There's two eight millimeter bolts that's securing it to the block. Uh, so remove that. And then we're gonna take the uh, stock one out and we're gonna reuse the O-ring. O-ring sits on top. This sits in the housing like that. Take the O-ring off first. Then your thermostat comes out. This is your old one. Here's your new shiny one. That one goes in. You're gonna reuse the O-ring. I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit and put it back in here and bolt it back on. Torque these eight millimeter bolts down to 89 inch pound, not foot pound. Made that mistake. Let the spark plugs. I know, I'm a noob. Anyways, you should have a little green lines to line you up uh, from the factory where which side to put on first. So got the new thermostat in there. These are again torqued down to 89 inch pounds. Uh, now we're gonna secure the housing to the block. Thermostat housing is back on. New thermostat is installed. Now we're going to reattach the uh, rear hose back to the thermostat housing using the stock um, cramp. Crimp. Cramp, crimp. Whatever it's called. Clamp. Radiator hose back on with the original clamp. I torqued these down to 89 as well. It didn't specify. It specified to torque these down to 89, but I torqued these down to 89 as well and then just gave just a little little more turn for a good measure. Take the passenger side heater hose and cut it right behind uh, the restrictor. So you have this clamp here. Inside there's a plastic piece in here that restricts the flow. Uh, you want to cut it right behind that. You can see you push down it's bendy right here but in here it's solid and we're gonna I believe take this out we're gonna cut this clamp off um, and then we're going to extract that restrictor and repurpose it so again we're gonna cut it about inch and a half to two inches behind this clamp that's uh, holding the restrictor in place passenger side Okay, you're gonna want to identify this part, uh, COYO2600. Uh, it is passenger side heater hose. It's gonna have a 90 degree bend in it. Um, I had to cut open the original hose that we had cut out uh, to get the restrictor. Uh, I just split this open. Uh, be careful because this piece is plastic. Um, you're also going to want to locate SA-2077. Um, it's your driver side and passenger side heater tube with O-ring. The passenger side will have a flat flange and the driver side will have kind of a bended one to it. 
um, you're not going to be using your old heater tubes. These you can just sell on eBay. Um, so you have to, it's, uh, it's hard to do this with one hand. Basically this is the, uh, um, the plastic restrictor that we extract from the uh, heating tube. And we're gonna push that up into this uh, 90 degree bend. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it in and then we're going to use this um, uh, heater tube and push that in so that it gets this um, restrictor to about right here. Then it came with a, a clamp and we're going to place that clamp um, around this. And you can see it actually has a, a band hanging a band notched out right where that clamp's gonna go on so again feeding this up into here using this to push it the rest of the way it should get us to about right there then we're going to clamp it down so actually I was wrong um, just as we had to cut that um, cl uh, clamp off to get the um, restrictor out that same type of clamp is uh, actually supplied and that is what's going to be going over um, in, uh, over the tube and holding that uh, restrictor in place so I'm going to loosen this up uh, and slide this up and then also slide this actually no I'm gonna put this up first and then I'm gonna put this over it uh, then we're going to install the heater tube to the block um, and then this uh, this crimp, uh, this clamp will actually be used to secure um, the tube to the actual uh, the hose to the to the heater tube. This is how the end product should look. We got the safety clamp that's um, compressing down on the restrictor. Um, we've got this clamp that we're about to use uh, when we put this over the heater block tube. Uh, that's this guy right here. Uh, we're going to torque this bolt uh, down to 89 inch pounds, and that should be it. Okay, passenger side heater hose is secured. Uh, you're going to want to face it diagonal towards the battery. Um, I put the clamp head on this side so that way it doesn't get in the way of the supercharger. Um, I think that's it for this step. Now the next step is going to be probably cutting and maybe another sliver off of this to make sure that this actually no, no, it's about perfect. Remove the factory sheathing that was left on over here. Uh, take the supplied sheathing that they gave you and slide that all the way onto the uh, hose that's sitting here. Um, there's also these uh, two uh, shrink wrap um, sheathings, I guess you want to call them. Uh, one will come down over here at this end and you'll uh, uh, heat gun that so it's a nice professional looking install. Um, so for now, just have both of these down here, slide this over, and we're going to take uh, it's a heat shrink clamp. Um, just as this one is on this end and we are going to slide that as well over this end then we're going to put our hose together really difficult with one hand okay so I'll put that together uh, butt that up and then this will slide up um, I think right about here um, I'm going to check the manual again, but then that'll get uh, shrink wrapped and then this sheathing will slide back all the way over and then this piece as well will slide all the way down with it and get shrink wrapped uh, down here at the bottom so it hides this. Okay, holy crap. Uh, just had a horrible, horrible accident. Um, there was still quite a bit of fluid coolant left in this heater tube and
when it pivoted down and it rested on here, a whole probably two cups of a uh, coolant went all over the intake. Um, luckily, before I had this uh, painter's tape, and uh, <laughs> it actually did the perfect job. Um, I would suggest uh, probably doing something a little more stickier and uh, waterproof. Uh, so now I just duct taped it, but I got all sorts of coolant sitting down here on the block now. I gotta clean up. Um, God, that could have been an absolute disaster. I honestly don't know what I would do if coolant uh, spilled down there. So be really careful. Um, I'm probably going to put a warning in the description at the very beginning of the video to make sure that you really uh, keep these sealed off from dirt, dust, and radiator fluid. So lesson learned, um, dodged a bullet, let's move on. Okay, final product, we've got this sheathing, it's uh, tying in all the loose ends from this fabric. Um, that uh, clamp, uh, I don't think you call it a clamp, but also another um, heat shrinking sheathing, I guess, uh, is securing this hose uh, to this fitting. And then we have the other end also sealed up as well with the sheathing. And then run the heat gun over everything um, and turn out really good. Now that the uh, passenger side heater tube is installed, we're going to move over to the driver side. We're going to locate the driver side heater tube and we're going to install that right there. I'm going to torque this down to 89 inch pounds, not foot pounds. Now we're going to locate the driver side heater hose. Part number C O Y O twenty five hundred. Uh, they talk about uh, install the supplied T assembly to the driver side heater tube. Uh, that T assembly is this right here. Okay, so we've got our T on. Uh, we've got a clamp uh, securing it to the heater tube. Um, we've used two of these uh, heat shrink clamps, one right here, one right here. Uh, we're pointing this right uh, between the cylinder block and uh, what is this, a water water valve, I guess. Um, that's about as far as we've got. Uh, I'm going to cut uh, these hoses to line up and then we're going to use a little junction tube the hell would you call this? I don't even know. Anyways, that's the next step. I ran into uh, a minor problem. Um, in the directions, uh, they don't uh, tell you how, like it goes from step 71 to step 72. Um, step 71 was uh, installing this uh, heater hose. Um, step 72 is basically just telling you to slide the uh, uh, fabric, heat shrinking fabric over the hose. So basically what, what's going on is they, they skipped the whole part of what we did to this over here where we spliced uh, and joined these two tubes together. Um, so the, the issue is the kit came with, uh, let's see, so it's this uh, driver side heater hose kit. Um, it came with three of these. Uh, these are Gates Power Grip um, heat shrinking uh, heater hose clamps. So there's two different sizes. Um, there is a 11, uh, 1 and 1 16th to 1 and 3 16th. That's the shrink range. And then there is uh, a 15 16th to 1 and 
one sixteenth. Uh, part number three two nine two five versus part number three two nine two nine. Um, so what I what I found is there should have been two of each, um, and the smaller ones are supposed to go on on these connections right here. Um, and then the bigger one, um, actually, no, there should have been three of all of the same um, 15 sixteenths to one and one sixteenths, because one would go here, one, two, and three on this side of the hose, then our coupler goes in, and then on this side of the hose, uh, because this is has just a little bit bigger diameter, um, that would be the one and one sixteenths to three and sixteenths that would go on this side. So basically, um, there's just not the right amount of uh, these clamps that came in this, and not the right sizes. These still work, even though the I put the bigger ones on here. They still shrink down enough, and it's really tight. Um, so I'm comfortable using that. Um, but the problem is, there's just not enough. Uh, hose clamps that came in this and if you can see I'm gonna try to pull this Oh, that didn't work. This is that same hose um, and it just barely barely will squeeze on that um, So that that's it's just too small um, So I don't know if you will come across this problem in your kit uh, just to recap I know I'm rambling, but uh, two issues, uh, well, actually three issues. Um, it also came with two couplers, and one has, this coupler right here has the same size on, on both ends. This coupler has a smaller end on one end right here, and a larger end on this side. Um, not sure if they did that because they didn't know exactly what size hoses you were dealing with. Um, I mean, it's not a universal kit. You know, it's definitely, you know, for 2015, you know, Mustang. So not sure what the confusion is there. So again, recap, issue number one, uh, even though it's common sense, uh, they didn't really um, describe in a step, like this should be 71.5. Uh, basically telling you how to um, cut and splice these uh, heater hoses together and what exactly what clamps to use. Um, and then issue number two is uh, didn't come with the right size of clamps uh, and the right quantity. Um, I talked to my local auto, uh, auto parts store. I was able to order um, the right ones, um, but it'll take a couple days to get here. Um, and then the issue number three is again that why why did they include um, two couplers? Um, but basically, what what it comes down to is you just need to splice these two, uh, join these two hoses together. Um, I'm going to cut this hose about right here. Um, this is going to get routed over here. This will get cut about here. I'll join them. Um, I'll just leave it. Uh, join for now until I get the actual heater clamp then I'll heat shrink it down and should be good to go. Okay quick update on this driver side uh, heater hose. So basically we got this uh, shrink wrap um, placed over the hose. We have the uh, shrink ends. Uh, one right here. I got another one just staged right here. Up here this is about where I cut the uh, factory hose, um, I guess right at the uh, third cylinder right here. Um, put the coupler in. Um, once I get that clamp um, ordered, um, I'll just have to take this off and put put one on here and then one right here. Uh, heat shrink those down. We're going to slide this back to out here. This will slide down with it. This will seal this end. And then I'll uh, just run the heat gun over it, um, seal the ends, and that should uh, complete that. Now we're going to reinstall the thermostat housing junction quick connect. Um, 
That's this uh, three-way uh, split. So we got this clamp here. That's a clamp back down. This part right here is secured to the thermostat housing. And then this part right here is secured back to the radiator hose. Now we took our uh, water neck and installed it to that uh, T-junction off of the um, water heater tube. Use the factory clamp. Now right, we're gonna locate this uh, bag that says SA-20029. Um, in this bag, you're gonna find a pigtail. Um, it's gonna have a three pin to two pin. Uh, it is a yellow, green, orange on one end and a yellow, orange on the other end. This is your uh, three-way to two-way air charge temperature pigtail. And we're going to install, uh, we're going to plug this and into the uh, three-way IMRC. Um, it's just back here on the passenger side. Uh, let's see if you can see that. Right there. And then we're going to route the other end along back here uh, for a later install. Okay, step 77. Um, it was a little bit confusing, but I think I got it figured out. You're going to want to find, uh, let me see, this guy, your inner cooler harness. Um, that's going to look like this big jumble of wires. Uh, it's going to have a red, red, and a green, green. Um, it's got this black, red, four pin connector. But the one that we're focusing on is this end. It's got a green, green. It's a two pin. And that's going to plug into one of these two IMRC uh, connectors. Um, you'll notice that there is a green white it looks like and then there's also a green yellow. Uh, if you look really closely there's a gray stripe on the yellow. That's the one that we're gonna want. So the green yellow gray and it also specifies that in the manual. So we're gonna plug that in and it says just for now to route this over to the fuse box area so I'm just gonna set that there for now and hopefully I didn't screw it up. Um, we also have to cover the remaining IMRC. It says to just wrap some tape around it and tape itself to the to the wire. So I believe that's this one and this connection right here. Um, if that's not correct I will uh, update but I'm pretty sure that we got to tape this one and this one. I don't know if those are going to be used uh, in a further step, but for now, it says to just tape and cover them. Using a six millimeter Allen wrench, we're going to remove all these bolts that are securing the supercharger to the new intake manifold. So now we've got the supercharger head unit disconnected from the air intake manifold and I think we're about to install the fuel rails and the injectors. Okay, locate your fuel injector rails. There's two of them. Grab your fuel injectors and in the same box that your fuel injector rails came in, you'll have these locking um, braces also. What I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of the synthetic grease that the injectors come with, applying a little bit to the O-ring, and then pushing down, um, you know, kind of wiggling it, spinning it until it gets in. And then once we get these in, then we'll put the, uh, the locking brace into place. Finished product will look like this. Now we're going to install the fuel rails 
with the injectors into the intake manifold. Uh, again, just going to grease these green O-rings and pop them in, and then we're going to uh, bolt them down. So the instructions have not called for actually bolting these down, um, but they are uh, installed, and you know you got to apply even pressure across all of them, and they'll pop right in. Um, now it's calling to find your Coyote fuel rail fitting bag. Um, and you have these quick connect valves. Or a fitting, I should say. Anyways, you're going to take an O-ring and put an O-ring on there, put a little bit of grease, and hand tighten one on the front passenger and then one on the rear passenger rail. So I'm going to take another one of these, put an O-ring on it, put another right here, and then we're going to torque it down to uh, specification. So this is front driver side, this is front passenger side. We've got one of those fittings, same on the passenger side. Up here we have the big, uh, what do they call it, uh, banjo fitting, and then that type of fitting on the rear driver side. We're going to install the intake manifold O-rings. I don't want to turn this upside down because it's got this piece and this guy right here that it's just not going to sit right. So I'm just going to try and do this a little upside down. So it's going to go in these grooves. I removed the tape from the intake and uh, cleaned it off with um, some acetone uh, carb cleaner. Um, just being careful not to you know, make sure nothing gets down in these uh, ports. That would be bad. Uh, and then now we're going to set the intake manifold very carefully into the engine. Um, while you're doing it, you got to make sure that you don't bump this so that you're O-rings don't come loose or misaligned. Also make sure that all of your wires are clear. Make sure that you got your knock sensor wire loom that's not resting on this block back here. It has to be off to the side like that in this little groove over here. This needs to be set back. clear. So once you get the intake manifold in there, I, I hope it was just me, um, but this was literally one of the hardest parts was just screwing in these bolts. They're 90 millimeter, uh, six, six millimeter by 90 millimeter bolts, but getting those to line up, um, I had to crawl in the engine, I had to push this way and pull this way and it probably took me an hour just to get these one two three four uh, bolts in so whoever's watching this in the future I wish you good luck now we're gonna take these 40 millimeter by six millimeter uh, intake manifold bolts and there's six of them I think one two one two three four five six I believe and uh, hand tighten. All right, we got, just to recap, we got uh, these four fuel rail bolts uh, finger tight, and then we got the six uh, air intake manifold bolts. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are all finger tight as well. Um, a little trick. Um, since the fuel rails are already on these middle bolts, they are a little tricky. You think that you would just try, try and drop it down on this side, but it won't go this way. You have to put it in from this side, and you just got to kind of get your fingers in there and drop it in and, uh, you know, finger tight it. Uh, there'll be a, another step, uh, I think about 10 to 15 steps ahead, where we'll actually torque these down with a um, an Allen... Uh, an Allen... 
wrench ball socket. <laughs> I don't know if I said, I don't know if I got the right. Hang on. Uh, I'll edit this. Let's see. What do we got? Okay. A five millimeter ball head Allen socket. Um, and hopefully with that, it'll be a little bit easier with the ball, uh, to get actually in there. Um, and then there's a certain pattern. So it's like a one, two, three, four, five, six that you have to go around tighten it and you do one pass and then you go back and do another pass. But anyways, that's, that's later for now. We got the, the air intake manifold in, we got the fuel rails in and we have the fuel rail bolts and the intake, uh, manifold bolts in plug in the fuel injector cables in just as simple as pushing and clicking all eight of them locate your fuel feed hose assembly and your crossover lines looks like a pack like this one is going to go in the back from this end to this end and then I believe another one's going to go either here or here to uh, this guy over here. But I'll show you uh, once I figure it out, show you how it looks. Okay, so step 92 and 93, um, pretty easy. Like again, you got these uh, fuel crossover lines. Um, they're both uh, interchangeable, um, but they definitely do go on one specific way. Um, at least I think so. Yeah, this angle's a little more. Anyways, one will click into this uh, uh, fuel line off, the, off of the passenger side fuel rail. Just clicks into place, route it over here, and then click into place over here. And it kind of just sits here like this, as the picture shows. Um, and then in the back, this heater hose kind of gets in the way, but I just pushed it up and over. Uh, I might have to reroute this heater hose later. I'm not sure if that's still going to get in the way, but you can see we got one here. The uh, fuel line goes down and then comes back up over here and plugs in right there. So we're going to find the uh, male to female fuel line adapter. And basically the fuel line that comes out on the driver's side, uh, we're going to plug in one end. Um, it has a rubber uh, tip <clears throat> that you got to pull off. And then the other end is going to hook onto this banjo uh, right here. This is to cover step 95 through 97. Uh, this one actually took quite a bit of time to figure out. Um, the instructions are not helpful at all. Um, had to do some Googling to find out what an EVAP solenoid was. Uh, regardless, I'm going to try to make this short. Um, first, you, it says install uh, the factory EVAP solenoid to the supplied billet adapter. This is the supplied billet adapter. It was not labeled. It was kind of just loose in my kit. Um, but this is the billet adapter that you're going to need. Your EVAP solenoid, uh, your factory EVAP solenoid looks like this. And it actually comes off of uh, right next to the throttle body of your uh, intake manifold, your stock intake manifold. And I got that from right here. So it was sitting in there like this. Two screws, pops out. And the weird thing is in the first couple of pictures, it doesn't really look like the one in the in the manual. Um, in this picture right here, have no idea what this. Uh, it's not. It's not the same solenoid, but it fits. Um, you're also going to need. Um, I thought that they included this by error because it says 11 to 15 Mustang fitting bag, um, and it comes with these. Um, I don't know what are those called? six ORB QDC mail fittings, basically fuel system fittings. Um, cause I already had another bag like this. So I thought that they included this, uh, by accident cause it's 11 to 15. My Mustang's a 16. Uh, but no, it's actually 
uh, for a purpose. You have a big uh, 15 millimeter one, and there's just one, and then there's three smaller ones, just like the ones that we used on the ends of the fuel rails, um, and then there's a plug in there. So you gotta get an O-ring and uh, you know put the O-ring on. Um, your uh, EVAP solenoid plugs in. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Should be wearing my helmet cam, whatever. Um, but anyways, pops in like that. And by looking at the picture, you can see that, oh, and this is the bracket uh, that came on the side of the supercharger. Uh, so when, you, when I disconnected uh, the supercharger from the air intake manifold, this piece um, was just basically on the side. So here in the picture, looks like it's sitting like this. Um, this guy is gonna sit on it like that. Those holes line up. And then this will screw into here. Uh, really hard with one hand. Okay, so should look like that. With this uh, fitting pointing that way, and this fitting pointing that way, and the bracket like that. Door. Something like that. So when uh, putting this together, it says mount to the adapter using the supplied two six millimeter by 25 millimeter SHCS. Um, I believe that these are in this manifold shipping bolt bag and there is an m6 by 25 it says there's two of them here's the two um i've just been measuring uh with a caliper just to make sure um and that's what these ones are these ones come out to uh, 25 millimeters by six millimeters and it measures it just the actual uh stem part not not including the head um so yes it's these ones and that's how we're going to mount the solenoid to uh, this billet block. One thing I noticed that uh, I feel like I should point out comes with a six by 15. It says there's two pieces. Um, and that's what these, these guys are. But I counted seven of them. So again, I thought there might be a mistake. Uh, but then going down the list, there is M6 by 16. Exact same uh, bolt, but literally just one millimeter shorter. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but you, you can see that these two are actually a little bit shorter than these ones, and it's literally by a, a millimeter. So just be careful uh, to separate those. Um, again, if you have calipers, try and measure them. Because um, even just by, if you're to just hold them in your hands, it's impossible to, to tell which ones are, are which. So you really got to make sure they use the, the right ones. So this one calls to use the, uh, and actually they might actually, seem like they might be a little bit different color. Yeah. It's like these are like a little bit lighter. These ones seem like they have a little bit more shine and these ones are a little bit more dull. But regardless, uh, that's what's going to be uh, used on your bracket to mount your um, EVAP solenoid uh, to this bracket, so. So this is the final product. We installed this uh, fitting. Uh, it doesn't specify what to torque it down to. You just crank on until it stops turning. Now step 98, uh, we're installing the O-rings. And here's our two O-rings. One's bigger than the other. And those guys are just gonna get laid in these grooves. This has to use a little bit of a silicone or grease so to help them stay in place. So, see how that goes. All right, we got our O-rings in. Um, this one keeps popping out, but I'm not gonna deal with that until I'm ready to actually put the supercharger head on. Uh, next step calls to take this o-ring and put it in here. It does not go on the top. It goes in here 
in the middle. Do not put it on the top. All right, we're on step 100. I'm gonna fill the supercharger with oil. Uh, supercharger, supercharger is shipped without oil. Uh, it comes in a separate bottle. Uh, it says caution, severe damage will occur to supercharger if you overfill or underfill it. Only use Whipple supercharger oil only. Uh, we're gonna need a quarter inch Allen, uh, Allen wrench. We're gonna put the supercharger on a flat surface, fill to the middle site of the glass. Uh, we're gonna tip it from side to side and then check again. Uh, it takes a min uh, maximum of eight fluid ounces and a min minimum of seven fluid ounces. We're gonna put the plug back in um, and that's about it. Change every 100,000 miles. Uh, after running the supercharger, the oil level will lower due to the filling of the bearings. Uh, the proper level while not running should be between the bottom of the sight glass and the middle, and it'll vary when running and not running. So, you don't want to set the supercharger on a completely flat uh, plane because it'll rest on... Uh, okay, I don't know why my GoPro just shut off on me. I have plenty of battery. Anyways, uh, you can see... If you set it on something flat, it's gonna rest on this. The manual says to not do that, so I have it kind of off the edge. Anyways, here's our sight glass. Here's our oil plug. I'm gonna take that off, I'm pour some oil in it, get it halfway in that sight glass, and we should be good to go. Okay, supercharger is going in. I greased the O-rings a little bit to help them stay in place. Uh, I'm just going to do this kind of quick. Uh, we got the oil in the supercharger head unit. Just going to drop it in. First, uh, first you put in this end first and then lay it down. Uh, make sure that this ring is greased a little bit, the O-ring, so it uh, slides in good. And here we go. Okay, supercharger head unit is installed. Um, I don't know exactly how to tell if those O-rings stayed in place. I guess I just got to cross my fingers and hope that you know there wasn't too much movement. I did try and set it directly down on it as much as I possibly could. Um, I don't think there's a way to to really tell. I, I guess I'll just have to finish the install and hope that there's no boost leak. Um, but anyways, moving on. Uh, now we're going to bolt uh, the head unit down to the intake manifold. There's a very specific pattern. Uh, I'm not gonna go over it because you should have the instructions. Um, but basically, you're gonna do a, I think like a crisscross pattern uh, at 13 foot pounds, and then you're gonna go back again at 17 uh, foot pounds. Step 102, using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the two factory fasteners from the timing chain to hood cover and two from water pump. Uh, so that's these guys right here. We've got one, two, three, four. For reference. One, two, three, four. Locate your idler plate and your tensioner spacer bag. There's gonna be five of them in here. Um, you can see on this side, this is not the correct side. You want the flat, flush side. And each hole um, where these um, posts are gonna go, they're numbered. So this one says three, four, two, one. Uh, shouldn't there be five? One, two, three, three. Oh, okay. One, two, three, three, four. And on the tops of these, there's a little number engraved also. So that one says three. I wonder if you can see that. So it's just going to set in here and they're a little loose and it says you can use some masking tape um, to make the installation a little bit easier. This one is a four, so I like that. And have the numbers facing up for future reference. I'm gonna grab the belt system bolt bag. There's gonna be 
an M8 by 90 millimeter. There's five of them. Those are the ones that we're going to use to put through the um, pulley bracket. Um, I used tape. on one side to hold the bolt in. I did that for all five of them. I'm not sure if you can see bad lighting. And those are basically just gonna bolt right up to those five bolts that we uh, removed. One, two, three, four, and where's the fifth one? I think the fifth one is up here somewhere. I gotta find it. Oh, there it is, it's heading back here. Anyways, just match it up. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. Okay, now the pulley plate is on. So I forgot to uh, record the first part of this, but basically uh, it's pretty pretty easy. You're gonna grab your uh, the supplied adjustable idler assembly. Um, then you're going to want to grab your uh, pulley. Should have gotten a few of these. It's going to be not the 36326, it's going to be a 36101. That's this guy. Then you want to find your bag that says Mustang Idler Spacer Bag. There are four, four uh, spacers and four. Um, what are they calling these washers? And basically, one's going to go on one side of the pulley. Snaps in. The other's going to go like that. You're going to take a big belt system shipping bolt bag. It's the one uh, half dash 13 by one and three quarter. Uh, there's four of them, so you're going to take that, that's going to go through the middle of this. Then also in the same bag that had the uh, washer and spacer, it's going to have this little uh, T-nut, which is going to go on the back side of the uh, adjustable idler assembly. I've already got mine bolted on because I screwed up and I used the uh, factory pulley um, that was on the factory uh, tensioner. I misread it. I thought it said to use the factory one, but it was just talking about the, the factory uh, position on the actual block. So I grabbed my flashlight. As you can see, I've already got it installed. Um, and this is that uh, T-nut, which is, goes on the back. You're going to use the factory bolt to secure the idler assembly to the block. Um, and then basically, this uh, pulley is just going to bolt right onto that uh, T-nut. And you're going to torque it down to 18 foot-pounds? No. You're going to torque that down to 30 foot-pounds and torque the um, stock spring loaded tensioner bolt to 18 foot pounds. We're now gonna remove the uh, factory plastic smooth idler pulley and replace it with another one of these uh, uh, 36101 steel pulleys. That's gonna be this pulley right here, right under the um, thermostat housing. And we're going to use the factory bolt, torque it down to 17 foot-pounds. Okay, I kind of went over just a couple steps just because they're really easy and self-explanatory, but basically I uh, got a 10 millimeter by 25 millimeter bolt and uh, screwed this in right here. Uh, then torqued that to, uh, let's see, 25 pounds feet and then went around to all these other bolts that we hand tightened and torqued those down to 18 pounds uh, foot. 
Step 110. Torque the 10 6 millimeter manifold bolts in the following pattern using a 5 millimeter ball head Allen socket. That is exactly this. A little hard to find. I'm going to go to a few different stores. Um, doesn't work. You cannot get to these. It is impossible. It just spins. It won't go in. So this whole process of tightening these down uh, has taken me about two to three hours uh, just trying a ton of different combinations of uh, elbows and um, flexible uh, we got the whole set of these try to size smaller that didn't work uh, let's see Anyways, I went to Tractor Supply. Uh, I broke one of these already. I had one. Um, I broke it trying to make my own tool. Um, I was trying to bend it. Uh, but they don't bend, they just break. Um, so I just went and got another one. And for some reason this one just barely fits. And what I noticed, what I had to do was get it in there and then just lightly tap it with a hammer and then the ball would go in. And then I used a wrench like this to crank on it. Um, I practiced over and over and over um, with a torque wrench to uh, this bolt right here, which I know that I can, that I can get to. And I practiced... Uh, just doing the 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 tension I set I set it to a hundred and six uh, inch pounds got the feel for how much pressure you need to apply I have no idea how close I am um, I just went a little bit tighter than what I felt was 106 pounds inch um, and that's as good as it's gonna get I, I don't know how else to tighten these down um, unless I don't know if this thing could flex then maybe or take the fuel rails off I still don't know why my GoPro randomly shuts off um, but yeah even if you took the fuel rolls off I don't even know if you can take the fuels off with the supercharger head unit installed but even if you could take the fuel roll off that still doesn't help you with this bolt number 10 or nine it's bolt number nine back here um, you have literally this much clearance. Um, that bolt was the death of me. And I lost a on wrench it's sitting down here somewhere. So hopefully it rattles out. It doesn't get caught in anything. Anyways, good luck. Um, again, there is no way that I can actually torque those bolts back there. I could torque some of them. Um, but there's just no way in hell that, unless there's a specialty tool that uh, I'm not aware of. Um, I've been to Harbor Freight, Lowe's, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Tractor Supply, um, and then even a special um, uh, car shop that's right down the road for me called Ken's. Anyways, I guess what the best, again, the best thing that worked was this. Step 111. We're going to get the spring-loaded tensioner provided by Whipple. Looks like this. Comes in a box. Then we're also going to get part number 36326. It's a grooved pulley. It's got six rib. And we're basically going to assemble it as stated in the directions. This is what it's going to look like. We've got a spacer in there and out here. Now we're going to install this on the uh, pulley plate. Um, you'll see that there's a little 
uh, dowel so it can only go one way and then we're going to torque this bolt down to 25 uh, foot-pounds this bolt uh, was torqued to 18 foot-pounds we're in step 113 we're gonna take the rest of our three pulleys uh, item number 36101 along with our step spacers and washers uh, there should only be three and three left and then we're also going to take the one half dash 13 by one and three quarter inch bolts. There should only be three left. It's the big, big thick ones. And we're going to be installing the pulleys to the three pulley locations on the, on the uh, pulley block. So we got one here, one here, and one here. The spacer goes on the inside washer goes on the outside and I don't think it matters which way the pulley goes left or right. Torque down to 30 foot-pounds. Use a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the threads. Step 114, install the supercharger pulley. These things supplied for, uh, these are 6 millimeter by 14 millimeter bolts with a 5 millimeter Allen socket. Hand tighten it for now. Step 115, reinstalling the factory water pump pulley. It's going to go on uh, the side that's caved in first. So this is going to go right back onto this guy. And these three bolts will sit in there like that. And we're going to use the factory belt to wrap wrap it around once it's uh, hand tightened. We'll use the factory belt to hold in place so that we can torque it down because um, it'll be hard to torque it when it's kind of spinning. Okay, so step 116 is to put on the supplied supercharger belt. Um, what I ended up doing was making sure that this guy uh, if this is 0%, um, what is this, the idle adjuster? No, not the idler, what is that? Adjustable idler, yeah. Um, I moved this back, it was all the way over here. Uh, we'll call that 100% and moved all the way to the left would be 0%. I moved it to about 60, 70% and then I tightened it down. Got got the belt uh, situated to all everywhere else uh, except for right here. Here and here is going to be your hardest parts. Um, I've got the battle scars to prove it. Um, I don't know if there's a special uh, tool that can compress this um, spring that's in here, but basically this arm uh, swivels and there's a massive heavy spring in here. Um, so what you're going to have to do is lift up on this and get it around here and then up on here but you gotta it took it took me and uh, another guy i was uh pulling up on this as much as i possibly could and it took us about five tries um i got some gloves on and then i got a just a little uh terry cloth just kind of used right here for leverage and pulled it up um, and then he was able to slip on this final bend right here um, there might be a lot easier way. Um, I thought about it for a little bit, but that's as a, that was my way of doing it. Um, let me know if you know an easier way. I would assume that there's maybe some sort of tool that can compress the spring for you and then you can just slip on the belt and then let go. I, I don't know, but I didn't have one and this is all I had. So I actually ended up taking off the coolant reservoir. Um, and some radiator piping uh, just to give me some more access to this but uh, it was definitely a, a tough step um, so just keep uh, keep cranking on it and then uh, make sure that this is torqued back down to spec um, actually I don't even think I can get a torque bit in there um, anyways uh, don't forget to torque down your supercharger pulley so I ran into a, a a weird issue um, we're talking about these supercharger pulley bolts uh, in the previous step it says to uh, step 
114. Install the supercharger pulley using the supplied 6 millimeter by 14 millimeter SHCS uh, using a 5 millimeter Allen socket. Uh, I had four, and I thought that that's what those were for. Um, but then on the next page, um, it says on uh, step 117, torque the supercharger 6 millimeter by 12 millimeter SHCS bolts to 130 pounds. So I found this bag, supercharger pulley bolt bag, and they are six millimeter by 12 millimeter, yet the previous step said to use six millimeter by 14 millimeter for the supercharger pulley. So I'm gonna take these off. Um, I'm gonna do a one by one because that was almost impossible getting uh, the belt wrapped around. So I'm gonna take one bolt out, replace it with one, take another one out, place it with another. Uh, hopefully there's, um, I mean, it says right on the bag, supercharger pulley bolt bag. Um, so I don't know why step 114 says to use the 6x14. Hopefully that was just a typo. Uh, I'll reach out to Ripple support and find out. But for now, I'm going to use what says on the actual bag. We're going to find our supplied ground wire. It's got an eyelet at the end. It's got a heat uh, shielding. And basically we're going to take the ground wire that had the eyelet and we're going to cut that off. This used to go I think right behind here but now we're going to reroute this. We're going to splice we're going to splice these together and then this is going to get screwed on right here. They provided a uh, butt connector. So we got the ground wire secured to the cylinder block. This is what it looks like now. And now we're going to take uh, the ACT pigtail, which we installed earlier, and then we kind of just had it sitting back here. Um, mine was just sitting about right here. It's on the driver's side. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's a orange and yellow wire. Uh, you're just going to take that and plug it into the um, air intake sensor, I believe. Yeah, air intake manifold air temperature. Um, right here on the intake manifold. This pops right in. This part of the install, uh, starting at step 121, uh, this is all related to the dual fan heat exchanger. Um, it is an upgrade to the stage two kit, um, or the stage one kit, I believe. Um, I opted to go with it. I live in Southern California, so it gets really hot sitting in traffic down here. So this is the heat exchanger with the dual fans. So right now uh, we're on step 122. It came with four uh, rubber pieces of um, uh, just rubber material and with a sticky adhesive on the back and basically just wash down uh, uh, the base of this to make sure that the stick and applied all four of the rubber uh, paddings to these brackets. Okay, we're on step 123. We're going to be installing these brackets onto the fans. Uh, the brackets are going to face, um, well, hard to explain, but basically there's one side that does not have a protective shroud. Lay those flat down and the, I guess the bracket side will face the same way. <clears throat> there are two flat sides, um, but I figured that those are actually going to be lining up um, with this. So you are going to be putting the bracket, um, there's one, two, three little notches, and you're, you're gonna wanna find, um, it it's actually wasn't labeled, but it's just a little bag of small, um, nuts, bolts, and washers, and anyways, you'll have a bag like this, and you open that bag, you'll have, looks like there's four parts, you got a nut, a washer, a bolt, uh, a square bolt, and uh, I guess a type of bracket. Um, the bracket's gonna slide on like this, the bolt will slide in there, um, and then you absolutely don't have your not in your washer. So you're going to put one, two, and then 
three, four. And do that for both of them. Now all four brackets are on, uh, both fans. This is what it looks like, just to give you a little overview. Now these are going to install like this, basically going to just kind of loosen these up a little bit and do both ends at the same time and kind of pry it apart and this bracket will come down around this and just kind of snap into place. Now the fans are on, a little side view. I don't know if you can tell or not, but the fans actually uh, have to go on this weld, so they're not going to actually sit uh, perfectly flat on the uh, actual radiator portion. Got about a quarter of an inch from the plastic to the side of the metal. Anyways, now uh, I'm gonna locate SA-00002 heat exchanger spud and grommet bag. Uh, you've got these grommets, they're gonna go in these holes, and then these spuds are gonna go inside the holes. Something like this. We're now gonna install these brackets. Um, there is a left and a right bracket, so make sure you got the right one. You're going to find your 2011-2015 Mustang LTE shipping bolt bag. Um, there's going to be four 8 by 35 millimeter flathead. And that's what these guys are. We go into these metal um, spuds. God, good thing of the name. And it's basically only one way it can go on. These are obviously going to point to the bottom. It'll bolt up like that. And it'll be the same on the other side. Again, there's a left and a right of these, so make sure you're uh, looking at the picture, right? Looks like they're slanting down these angles. They're slanting down on both sides. For step 129, uh, locate the 2015 Mustang coupling nut bag. Comes with four of these big coupling nuts. And basically we're gonna install, or just basically screw them in. Uh, there's two factory um, bolts that go through these holes right here, and they stick out pretty far in the back. So you just screw those on, two over here, and then two Yeah, same thing for this side between these two holes right back here. Once you have these uh, couplers screwed in, you have this factory wiring harness and you have the factory plastic um, harnesses. Uh, you're gonna wanna use a pry tool um, and remove all of them. So factory wire harness is just gonna be hanging here. All right, so we're about to put the heat exchanger behind the bumper, um, or at least the crash bumper, whatever you call it. Uh, when I took off these um, little plastic clamps that were holding this wire loom, uh, I noticed that there was a piece of tape that was kind of holding this side down. Um, here's the piece of tape. Uh, I thought it was just a really strong piece of tape, but nope, it's actually uh, wires, two tiny little wires wrapped in tape. Um, and actually that went back here like this. So it was connected like that. I thought that it was just holding me back, so I cut it. My bad. It looks like it goes to this little guy down here. Not sure what it is. Um, my guess is a temperature sensor maybe, because it doesn't really go anywhere else except this little, little tip right here, so. 
Um, anyways, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm just going to splice it, um, crimp it, and not cut it again. So, a little warning, don't cut that guy. All right, we got the heat exchanger in. Mounted up to these two bolts. Or coupler, I guess, bolt coupler. Going to drill a one and a half inch hole center on this plastic shroud passenger side so that we can get our grommet in there and our hoses through. I'm not going to route the heat exchanger uh, hose so find this part and basically that's just going to go through. Uh, let me get my light. We drilled the hole in this plastic shroud on the passenger side then we installed the one and a half inch supplied grommet. Um, we're then going to wrap this heater hose through here. This is a little, f uh, little flap on the other side. I'm going to push that out of the way. Connect uh, one end here. And then the other is going to go on the bottom uh, behind the idler plate. Uh, there's a bottom intercooler uh, port on the intake. Okay, so we got one end pinch clamped down here, snakes around, goes behind the uh, supercharger pulley and the pulley plate, zip tied with uh, the rest of this wire loom, comes down here, through the grommet, out the other side, and then pinch clamped again. Step 135, install the supplied quarter inch uh, bypass actuator. Um, so basically it's just this little quarter inch hose. The bag is called bypass hose. And basically that's gonna go on this actuator and uh, clamp it down. And you're gonna follow that going to go on this nipple right here. Step 136, install the supplied coolant vent line with dual 90 degrees. Use the factory pinch clamps to secure hose in place. Um, Guessing this is it. Radiator vent hose. Came with clips or uh, clamps, so I don't know why it says use factor ones, but I'll just use these ones. This has the dual 90 degree ends. It's gonna go from this outlet on the coolant reservoir to this nipple right here. Okay, a little update. Um, actually skipped over, uh, I'm at step uh, 145 um, there's just a lot of uh, hoses we have let's see if I can do this with two hands one hand um, we installed um, I don't know what they call these, these little nipple things uh, the big one on this side and two smaller ones right here a plug goes right here uh, and then we have just a you know, couple um, fitted uh hose lines um, you'll have the instructions um, it's just it's pretty just self-explanatory um, we ran a, a brake booster hose uh, this uh, evap solenoid hose which connects down there uh, so we got this guy come into here this bottom one wraps around and comes to the brake booster we got this hose on here it's just kind of hanging here for now we put on, actually I think we already went over this one. Uh, this hose was really, really long. It's the coolant overflow, I think. Um, but it snakes around, comes down here, and then sits right on here on this 
uh, nipple. Uh, I think that's about it. So again, you'll have the instructions. It's really easy. Just uh, plugging in hoses. Didn't feel the need to see her and go over every single step. Okay, you're gonna find uh, the EVAP extension pigtail. It's about two feet long, two and a half feet long. And you're gonna plug one end into your factory um, EVAP solenoid connector. And then we're gonna route it, I believe, um, underneath uh, the supercharger head, underneath the driver's side uh, heater tube, and then back around to the EVAP solenoid. And it's gonna be plugged in right here. All right, step 147. Uh, we just got done installing the EVAP uh, pigtail extension. Um, now it want, it's asking, there's no pictures or anything, but it's saying install the supplied electronic throttle pigtail to the factory electrical connector. Uh, then it says leave near the thermostat housing for later connection to throttle body. So they give you two pigtails that are pretty much exactly the same. Here's one and here's the other. One is maybe an inch. Yeah, about an inch longer than the other one. Um, and then there's this other cable, uh, and, they're, and they're exactly the same connector type. I don't know what kind of connector you would call this, but... Um, so it's kind of confusing what cable, they don't specify what cable they want you to use. Um, <clears throat> but this one is already very long, and I read ahead in the directions, um, and it looks like this is going to be probably an airflow sensor. Um, I looked at the, the stock uh, air intake box and there is a sensor on the side of it that I think that we're going to uninstall and install into the new air intake housing. So I'm going to you put the shorter one on here because it seems like we might need the extra inch um, for this. So what I'm gonna do, um, I already kind of mocked, put this up here. Uh, so here's the connector. Um, so I'm going to route this along the same path as the EVAP solenoid pigtail. It's going to go underneath, um, pretty much just underneath the supercharger head. Um, and then I'm going to leave it um, kind of down here because it's going to come back up and wrap around and plug in right about here. Step 148, we're going to install the uh, pump mount clamp to the um, intercooler reservoir. And we're gonna look for this bag. A couple screws, that's it. All right, we're gonna install the intercooler pump to the reservoir. And then you're gonna get this 90 degree tank pump uh, hose. That's gonna go right here, clamp it down. And then you're gonna get this, uh, I don't know what you call it, just another weird looking hose and that's going to come off uh, right here the weird squiggly end it's going to come off right here all right final product's going to look like this i'm now going to mount the intercooler tank uh, underneath the driver's side headlight. Um, we're going to use uh, two hex head bolts, uh, with some washers, and an Allen head. This was already screwed in and it came with a washer. In the directions it says it's a 8 by 12 but this is actually like Eight by I think sixteen or eighteen, so a little discrepancy, but so the intercooler is gonna mount like this. I'm just gonna sit up in there just like that. There's two holes. I believe this one right here and this one right here 
that matches up with the back of the intercooler tank. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to cut a notch out of this plastic shroud right here so that the hose, <clears throat> this hose is going to wrap around and attach right here. So we're going to cut this little piece out. Okay, so I got the intercooler tank installed. There is a the Allen uh, bolt goes up underneath here, and then there's two pull this plastic shroud off to the side. You gotta get your fingers back in here, and that's the two bolts on the inside. You're gonna need a ratcheting wrench. And then we connect the hose to the heat exchanger. Step 150, uh, 153, um, we're going to install the supplied steel mass airflow adapter. That's this guy. I'm going to be installing this to the inside of the airbox. So we're on step. 154. There's two parts here. This piece, uh, what do they call it? Uh, plastic Venturi ring. It's 123 millimeter. It's just this ring. Um, goes on the back side. Then you're going to find four of these 16 by uh, 16 by 6 millimeter bolts. And we're basically going to feed those through the uh, MAF bracket to the underside of this ring. So step 155 says to install the supplied snorkel to the airbox lower half. And you can see it's got these two bolts that are in there, but <clears throat> um, here's the snorkel. It doesn't look like the one in the picture. This one in the picture has like a, a bigger piece right here and it's like slanted and it's got these two bolts, but this one doesn't have any bolts. It's not slanted right here on the end and I have no idea where this even goes. Um, there's, there's no place for it at all. Um, so I'm just going to skip that step and I'll have to talk to Whipple support uh, on Monday, today's Sunday. Uh, so for now, I'm going to move on. <clears throat> I'm going to take the stock uh, mass airflow sensor out of the uh, stock uh, factory airbox. Um, it says to uh, not reuse these bolts. It supplied two little bolts. Um, I'm going to install that. Right into there. All right, we got the air intake box set in here. We got the um, air filter clamped down with the wire clamp. I don't know what the hell you call them. And then it's secured over here. Uh, I got a little washer, six millimeter, on top of a um, a bigger washer. Um, and then it's a, I believe, a six by. Uh, 6 by 15, 6 by 16, 6 by 15 millimeter SHCS bolt. Kind of looks like this, but smaller. Um, it just says to use a 6 millimeter washer to secure the airbox to inner fender. Um, that didn't work because the hole uh, is huge. It's like this big. So. I just used a smaller washer on top of a bigger washer. It doesn't say to do that, but uh, there's no other way to do it. So common sense says to do that. Install the uh, intercooler filler neck. 
to the side of the Arantic housing. And then we had a three quarter inch hose that was just hanging down here. That comes from uh, the center cooler, the top port right here. So it kind of runs down, snakes underneath, pops back up. That's gonna plug in right there. I'm gonna slide it in more and then pinch it down with the hose clamp. Locate your filler neck tank, uh, three quarter inch hose. Basically that's going to plug into the other side of the filler neck. Uh, it's gonna get routed below the air box, come down, and plug into the top of the intercooler tank. Okay, so we got that hose, that hose, and this hose. This is the vent, and this one and the one right below it. Uh, this is the filler. Uh, they, they both route together um, right underneath this spot of the airbox. You can see them come out right here. Then they both kind of snake down right to the uh, inner tank. And then they terminate right here. Not sure uh, if this is the best way, but this this one kind of has a 90 degree elbow in it, um, but because it's just a filler, um, I'm not too worried about it. It's not pinched, um, so I think it's gonna be okay. So I've got the gear motor out of the old throttle body. Now we're gonna be installing it into the new stage two 132 millimeter Whipple throttle body. So I opened up the Whipple and I got a little surprise. Um, it's already got this gear and it's already got a motor in it. So this is the stock one that came with the factory. Uh, I guess bonus? <laughs> I mean it clearly says in the directions to, to do all this. I guess I could have just skipped steps, well, I don't know. 171 through 176, 178. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave this one in here. Maybe sell that one on eBay. One very important step that you don't wanna miss when putting this back together, um, there is a small O-ring around the perimeter of this. Um, and it definitely sits down in a groove and it could be a little misleading because on this side it was up and it didn't look like it can go down any farther, but it did. Um, so just make sure that O-ring is seated down there nice and properly. Um, and make sure that your uh, connectors right here didn't pop off. Um, on this one they did. So this is what they look like when they come off. So just make sure that they're still connected to the back plate and uh, make sure your gear is actually engaging and make sure your o-ring is in place okay step 178 uh, we're gonna install the throttle body to the supercharger um, make sure you find your o-ring and place that in there uh, then you're gonna find this bag elliptical throttle body bolt bag again this is for uh, stage 2 132 millimeter um, throttle body and we're just gonna mount it up all right, we got the stage two throttle body in. Um, you're gonna have to pull some of these hoses out of the way to get to this uh, bottom right bolt down here. And you're gonna need, um, at least when you're threading it in for the first time, you're gonna need some long Allen, um, maybe in with a ball head. But then when you're torquing it, um, definitely gonna need uh, these uh, Allen socket, long long Allen socket with a, with a ball head. Um, torque it to 88 inch pounds, um, and you're good. Okay, we got the uh, intake finished. Uh, just note that there's two different sizes of these rings. Uh, Learn that the hard way. Um, there's the ones that say 0525 at the end of this uh, product ID right here. 
the zero, uh, zero 0525s are a little bit shorter and they go up here. Um, then you have the 0555, five, five, I believe. And the, those ones go down here. They're just a, just a tad bit bigger. Um, and we plug in our uh, mass airflow sensor that was uh, hanging here. Now we're gonna put the top of the um, air intake box on. And I think that's about it for at least the, the air system. Um, then we'll move on to wiring everything up. So even though I followed the instructions here, you can see that this port for the mass airflow sensor is pointing up. Um, it's not supposed to point up. I had it mounted here previously, uh, but the hood wouldn't shut because this stuck out too far. So I rotated, I did undid these bolts down here and then uh, rotated it 90 degrees. And now it uh, sticks out at a horizontal angle versus a vertical angle. Um, since I had to take this all apart anyways, I figured I would move these metal band fasteners to more on the underside instead of the top for a little bit cleaner of a look. Um, and actually might even be able to swap it around so that this bolt is on this side uh, for an even cleaner look. I might do that as well. All right, we're installing this uh, relay. It's got two green and two red wires coming out of it. Four, four leads. Uh, so basically we're going to take a push pin that they provide and it's going to go through this hole. And then it's going to uh, push in right, right behind this uh, connector on the actual fender. Uh, so that way it'll secure the relay to the fender. So you're going to locate the red wire coming out of this relay. It's about a foot and a half long. And you're going to remove the third nut off of this terminal right here. You're going to place that in there and screw it down. Now we're going to take the ground coming out of the relay. It's branched off of uh, one of these other wires. It's got an, uh, an eyelet also. We're going to route that down here, passenger side. And you have these three grounds right here. Undo the top one, and that's going to go right there. Okay, just a little recap of this relay installation. Um, we've got the ground hooked up. Uh, the ground is the wire that splits off of uh, this main plug for the intercooler pump. And that's going to get woven through here and plug in on that way. Uh, we have two green wires that are in one jacket. Um, if you can see those. But that's this cable that runs back here to the passenger side IMRC connector. And that's something that we've already connected earlier, um, actually before even installing the supercharger blower. Um, so that's, that's already plugged in back there. Um, then you have a fuse that's gonna get mounted up in here somewhere. Um, and then the power. So the only thing left is this, this plug right here. And again, going to go underneath the radiator uh, shroud, zip tied. It's going to come down here and we're going to plug it in to the back of this. So I'm on the last step, uh, step 191. Um, I mean, it's not the last step, but uh, it's the last, very last thing that I have to do. I just have to plug in literally one connection for the uh, dual fans down here. And that is it. The next step after that is uh, refill the engine coolant. Pretty pumped. So this seems to be pretty much the last step um, other than installing the plastic cover for the jack shaft um, and hooking the battery back up and hooking the fuel pump uh, back up underneath the rear seat. Um, so anyways, uh, this is a, for the dual fan installation. Um, again, if you didn't get the dual fan installation, then just disregard. You're probably done already. Um, but it came with a, another wiring harness, uh, very similar to the one that we just installed 
down here. Um, there was a, another connector coming off of this. It's an orange wire. And this harness also has one. This one has the male uh, connector. The other wiring har harness had the female. Uh, so you remove the little plastic um, placeholder. That comes off. Hook those together. Um, the directions aren't really clear uh, what to do with this, so I'm just going to find a spot um, similar to that. Um, I don't see any hole, so I might just I might just drill a hole in the fender and uh, secure with a push pin. Um, but anyways, secure this somehow. Um, it's got another power cable, uh, and that's just going to go again right on top of that third post. Um, we have another ground, and then we have our two dual fan um, connectors. And that's just going to get routed probably same way over here, and those two plugs will connect to it. Um, but I'll show you uh, the installation uh, once it's finished. So what I ended up doing for the second relay is I just used the same hole uh, for, the, for the previous one and uh, pulled the pushpin back out, um, put them at a 90 degree angle, and uh, just push the push back, uh, push pin back in. Um, we have the cables run down here. Use the same ground. Um, the instructions say that there's supposed to be two grounds coming off of the fan connectors, but there's not. I'm guessing they updated this wiring harness. Um, so there's just one ground for the whole relay. Um, and that just went on the same bolt that we used for the previous relay. And come around here. And the dual fans just plug into the uh, two uh, connectors on the harness. And then I just zip tied it right here. All right, it's finally coming together. Now to add coolant. Make sure your petcock is uh, tightened. Okay, just a little recap. Um, again, we've got all of our wiring finished, zip tied. Um, filled uh, this tank, radiator uh, tank with uh, fluid. And then we filled up the intercooler tank uh, with fluid as well. Um, I do not have a um, coolant uh, air bubble flushing system so I'm just going to follow the instructions on um, basically doing a little dance with turning the ignition on uh, letting the pumps cycle and then topping off uh, topping off the levels um, other than that uh, I got the battery on a tender right now the battery was getting a little low uh, we hooked up the fuel pump back under the driver seat or I'm sorry the uh, rear uh, rear seat and I'm just going to go through the instructions uh, one more time. Um, literally just going to read it from front to back just to make sure that uh, you know I'm not missing anything. Um, and then I guess we'll uh, try and start it up. Okay, it's been a couple months. About to fire it up for the first time. I hope I did everything right. If not, at least it'll be all on GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> I uploaded the new tune. Follow the instructions as good as I can. Okay.
it's done finally two months of wrenching on it in my spare time I had no idea really even how to do any kind of engine work at all um, like I said earlier I only wrenched on you know my dirt bikes just a little bit um, honestly I never even changed spark plugs before so uh, was really not sure how this was gonna go but the instructions were you know very clear um, I hope this video helps anyone else out there like me um, I do not recommend doing it uh, if you're not comfortable taking on the task because it definitely was um, a pretty pretty hard task for someone who isn't you know extremely mechanically inclined um, but regardless um, Hopefully this video will help somebody out there. Um, now it's time to go tear up the streets in Mexico.